the fires were uh, were it's it's just crazy, right? I mean, how many people were displaced, and uh, you know, to see an entire town within a week just be completely destroyed with 30,000 people, 40,000 people displaced, um, and how many students were displaced, and how many of our faculty, um, the uh, our full-time painting instructor lost her entire house. She lost everything. Our drama instructor lost everything. Um, they both lived uh, up in paradise. Five percent of our students lost their homes, lost everything. Seven percent of the people who work at Butte College lost everything in the fire. A lot of the students that were in our makerspace were some of the ones that were affected. I have one student who's coming into the makerspace and she's making things because it's, it's what she wants to do. She wants to be creative, she wants to use her hands, and she said that it, it takes her mind off of having lost everything. That's part of how we're going to move forward. We have a saying, we are Butte strong. We're a super strong community. We're resilient and makerspace is part of the way that we can move forward. I see people peeking in all the time and we always encourage them, come in, come in, and they're like, oh, but I'm not an artist. It's like, you don't have to be an artist. You, you don't have to call yourself an artist. I always try to tell people, if you have an idea in your head even, and you're having trouble getting it out, like, come over, we'll help you get that idea into something that you can walk away with. They need to be influenced in a way that can show them like, hey, there is an opportunity. There is a way out of not enjoying your life to finding your passion and growing that passion. And there's communities out there that will help you grow that passion. This place gives everybody an opportunity to grow and learn and develop a community within the school. For education to kind of expand its broader scope and lens of what it is to educate or be educated and how it can look differently than the model traditionally does. Just seeing and hearing the response from faculty and students on how exciting and how new and how fun this place is has been a huge achievement. One of the things that we want to do is have this feedback loop. We're hoping that naturally when students come in here where they can just kind of play, that eventually it'll encourage them to take these classes. On the flip side of that, what we're doing in physics, the teacher just required that one of the machines has to be created in the makerspace. So that's something that we're trying to incorporate as part of getting the maker mindset into our curriculum. The makerspace is one key place where students can really prepare for work in the 21st century. Students have to go into workplaces in situations where there are no clear answers. Working in a makerspace helps them develop these problem-solving skills. It helps them integrate technology into their work in a very powerful and meaningful way. With this space, what you get is a very hands-on experience, and there's this feeling of making something and watching your image print onto a t-shirt or watching a laser etch it into glass. That's just extremely satisfying, and it's along the lines of, I learned how to use this technology, and now I'm putting it to good use. You can test all day long straight A's, but when it comes to taking that information and applying it to the real world, it's like, are you capable? We're able to register our students for the makerspace, and then every hour that they spend in here, the school makes money with it. So the first semester, we registered 522 students. They spent 950 hours in here, and the school made about $3,600 off of it. We've been bringing in anywhere from $500 to $800 a month doing work for the campus. So this month already, we brought in about $1,200. It showed that we're, we're able to start heading towards sustainability. Everyone wanted to be able to provide the students an opportunity to really evaluate and expand upon their own entrepreneurship ideas. And that's part of the goal for, for the Makerspace also is not only how can we make money with the Makerspace to sustain it, but how can our students start making money with it. I'm the owner of something called Pipevine Chocolate, which is a bean to bar craft chocolate. So using this space to create my own display and it becomes more homegrown, more natural. I'm able to prototype an actual tabletop game all right here in our own studio so that when I get it out into the test market, it, it has some impact. The makerspace is kind of like bridging the gap between the education that I can get here and what I can do with it. 
pushing your own applications or pushing your own creations and making a name for yourself because you have to enjoy what you're gonna be doing for a long time. The sky's the limit with all of this. It's only bound by our creativity and our ability to see how we can use this. I hope that it becomes a seamless part of our everyday activities at the college. Yeah.